Be pronounced? No, Your Honor. Yes. I have something to say. You can put me away, but you can't put away what's going to happen to you and to this whole country next time. Next time we are going to. I won't say anymore. We'll leave that for the appeal. It is the judgment of this court that the defendant, John Huberman, having been found guilty of the crime of treason against the United States by the jury of this court for the Southern District of Florida at Miami be committed to the custody of the United States Attorney General for imprisonment in an institution of the penitentiary type for a period of 20 years. And the defendant may be forthwith remanded to the custody of the United States Marshal. Court is now adjourned. Here she comes. Just a minute, Miss Huberman. Hold on, Miss Huberman. Way, would you please? We'd like a statement from you, Miss Huberman, about your father. For instance, do you think your father got what he deserved? Could we say that you're pleased your father's going to pay the penalty for being a German worker? Let us know if she tries to leave town. Would you care to pause for some refreshments, Mr. Hoff? Kids. Alicia, were you really followed by a policeman? It sounds very exciting. I'm going to shoot it out with him tomorrow. No, thanks. Have oh, enough. So no, have you. Don't be silly. The important drinking hasn't started yet. Everybody down here's got a stuffed fish hanging on the wall. Where'd they get it? Never seen a fish. How about you, handsome? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Well, it doesn't matter. I like party crashers. He's not a party crasher. I brought him. Oh, Mr. Hopkins. I wouldn't mind being mind followed by a cop. Wasn't I hate low, underhanded people like policemen. Who's he footing after you? Of course, I'm a marked woman, you know? I'm liable to blow up the Panama Canal any minute now. You want some ice in it? No, thank you. It's not becoming for a lovely girl like you to be worried about, policeman. You won't be tomorrow. Oh, really? We sail at 10. Really? We just sail away. Huh? You show me your fish and I'll show you a liar. What this party There's needs no is a little gland treatment. We better start breaking up, Alicia. I have to be on board at 9. One week in Havana, and this whole thing about your father will have blown over. Do you love me, Commodore? You're a very beautiful woman. I'll have another drink to appreciate that. Where are you going? Fishing. This time of night, you're mad. How about you? Still What's drinking? What's the difference? There's no fish day or night. Do you know something? I like you. Well, I'll see you on board at least at 9 o'clock. Oh, I, I have to think that over. Well, you don't have to pack. We'll pick up some things in Havana. I think I'll have to leave them here to dry out, Alicia. I'm very sorry. You all have to go. It has been a perfectly hideous party. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. There's one more drink left to peace. Shame about the ice. What is? Gone. Who's gone? The ice. 
Why do you like that song? <laughs> because it's a lot of hooey. There's nothing like a love song to give you a good laugh. That's right. It's stuffy in here, isn't it? Might be. What about... We have a picnic. Outside? Yeah, it's too stuffy in here for a picnic. You want to finish that? Shame to leave it. You're quite a boy. My car is outside. Naturally. I want to go for a ride. Very much. <laughs> what about your guests? They'll crawl out under their own steam. I, I'm going to drive. That, that's understood. Don't you need a coat? You'll do. <laughs> On you, you might catch cold. How am I doing? Not bad. Scared? No. No. Oh, you're not scared of anything. <laughs> not too much. This fog gets me. Get your hair in your eyes. Oh. What does the speedometer say? 65. I want to make it 80 and wipe that grin off your face. I don't like gentlemen who grin at me. A cop. What? A policeman is chasing us. Look. Oh, they make me sick. He wants to talk to you. Drunk and driving. My second offense. Now I go to jail. Whole family in jail. Who cares? Having a time for yourself, aren't you? People like you ought to be in bed. Drunk, huh? Just a minute, officer. No arguments, mister. You ain't got a leg to stand on. Sorry, but you didn't speak up. That's all right. Sure you can handle it? No trouble. Well, you ought to know. Where's the ticket? He didn't give me a ticket. What? What's your name? Devlin. Well, you showed that cop something. He saluted you. Did he? I saw him. Why, you double-crossing buzzard? You're a cop. All right, we'll argue you... later. Get away from my car. Get out of my I'm car. I'm going to take you home. You're not going to take me home at all. Oh. Move over. Oh, my God. 
car of federal cop crashing my party. Just like that buzzer with the glasses. Leave me alone. They're trailing me to get something on me. Oh. Are you going to calm down? Good, now move over. Oh. oh I'm not going to leave. You'd better drink that. Oh. Why all this? Sorry, this is... Go on, drink it. Finish it. Feel better? What do you care how I feel? You... You cop. Oh. Oh. What's this all about, huh? What's your angle? What angle? What last night? Just wanted to be friends. Friends, yeah. <laughs> so you could frame me, huh? No, I got a job for you. Oh, well. Don't tell me. There's only. Oh. There's only one job that you coppers would want me for. Well, you can forget it, Mr. Devlin. What? Devlin. I am no stool pigeon, Mr. Devlin. My department authorized me to engage you to do some work for us. It's a job in Brazil. Oh, go away. The whole thing bores me. Some of the German gentry who are paying your father are working in Rio. Ever hear of the IG Farben Industries? I tell you, I'm not interested. Farben has men in South America planted there before the war. They're cooperating with the Brazilian government to smoke them out. My chief thinks that the daughter of a, uh... Of a traitor? Well, he thinks she might be valuable in the work. They might sort of trust you. And you could make up a little for your daddy's peculiarities. Why should I? Patriotism. That word gives me pain. No, thank you. I don't go for patriotism or... or patriots. I'd like to dispute that with you. Waving the flag with one hand and picking pockets with the other. That's your patriotism. Well, you can have it. We've had your bungalow wired for three months. Conversation between John Huberman and daughter Alicia, 6.30 p.m. January the 9th, 1946, at Miami Beach, Florida. Some of the evidence that wasn't used at the trial. I don't want to hear that. Relax, hardboard, and listen. There's for us, both of us, a mint of money in it, Alicia. I told you before Christmas I wouldn't do it. You don't use your judgment. You can have anything you want. The work is easy. I'm not listening, Father. This is not your country, is it? My mother was born here. We have American citizenship. Where is your judgment? In your feelings, you are German. You've got to listen to me. You don't know what we stand for. I know what you stand for. You and your murdering swine. I've hated you ever since I found out. My daughter, don't talk to me like that. Stay on your side of the table. Alicia, put your voice down. I hate you all. And I love this country. Do you understand that? I love it. I'll see you all hanged before I raise a finger against it. Now go on and get out of here. Oh, so help me, I'll turn you in. Don't ever come near me or speak to me again about your rotten schemes. Well, that doesn't prove much. I didn't turn him in. We didn't expect you to. 
Well, what do you say? Go away and leave me alone. I have my own life to lead. Good times. That's what I want, and laughs with people I like. And no underhanded cops who want to put me up in a shooting gallery, but people of my own kind who treat me right and like me and understand me. Good morning, Alicia. Oh, hello. Thought you might need a hand this morning. We're setting with the tide, you know. Are you ready? Yes. Don't tell me you've forgotten, my dear. Almost. I'll help you pack. Although you really don't need anything, we've got everything on board. Oh, thank you. I'll pack myself. I... We're murdered at the Hotel Pier. You know the spot. Yes. You're a darling. Sweetest girl I ever knew. See you soon. Well, what about it? Plane leaves tomorrow morning early. All right. You better tell him. seeing him in Rio. Oh, no. No, I won't be seeing any men in Rio. Oh, yes, you will. That's our boss, Paul Prescott. Did he say anything about the job? No. No hints? No. He had some news about your father he picked up at the last stop. What about him? He died this morning. Oh. Poison capsule. He did it himself? Yes, in his cell. Sorry. I don't know why I should feel so bad. When he told me a few years ago what he was, everything went to pot. I didn't care what happened to me. But now I remember how nice he once was. How nice we both were. Very nice. It's a very curious feeling. As if something had happened to me and not to him. You see, I don't have to hate him anymore. Or myself. We're coming into Rio. Oh, yes, I wonder if the embassy or someone can get me a maid. It's a nice apartment and I don't mind dusting and sweeping, but I hate cooking. I'll ask them. And while you're at it, find out when I go to work. And on what? Yes, ma'am. Care about something, please? Have another drink? No, thank you. I've had enough. No oh, true. Wish I'd said it. Well, do you hear that? I'm practically on the wagon. That's quite a change. It's a phase. You don't think a woman can change? Sure. A change is fun. For a while. For a while. What a rat you are, Dennis. All right. You've been sober for eight days. And as far as I know, you've made no new conquests. Oh, well, that's something. Eight days. Practically whitewashed. I'm very happy there. Why won't you let me be happy? Nobody's stopping you. Why don't you? Give that copper's brain of yours a rest. Every time you look at me, I can see it running over its slogans. Once a crook, always a crook. Once a tramp, always a tramp. Go on. 
You can hold my hand. I won't blank me before it afterwards. Scared? I've always been scared of women, but I get over it. And now you're scared of yourself. You're afraid you'll fall in dump with me. That wouldn't be hard. Oh, now, careful, careful. You enjoy making fun of me, don't you? No, Tev. I'm making fun of myself. I'm pretending I'm a nice, unspoiled child whose heart is full of daisies and buttercups. Nice daydream. Then what? What is this? I think I will have another drink. I thought you'd get around to it. Make it a double. Let's go sell the duple. Duple? Why won't you believe in me, Dad? Just a little. Why won't you? because you have fallen for a little drunk you tailed in Miami and you don't like it. It makes you sick all over, doesn't it? People will laugh at you, the invincible Devlin, in love with someone who isn't worth even wasting the words on. Poor Dev. In love with a no-good girl, it must be awful. I'm sorry. Gentlemen, I assure you she's a perfect type for the job. It's not the girl. It's this German scientist I'm worried about. I simply question why we don't find some way of taking them into custody. It'll do no good. Even if we arrested their leader, Alexander Sebastian, tomorrow another foreign man takes his place and their work goes on. Yes, you're right. I see, Captain Prescott, your method is the best way. Well, she's good at making friends with gentlemen, and we want somebody inside his house, in his confidence. You have faith in this procedure, Captain Prescott? Oh, yes, but somebody on the inside. Have you consulted the young lady? No, not yet. As a matter of fact, our man Devlin just brought her down here the other day. Now we're waiting for Sebastian to come back to Rio. Has your Mr. Devlin told her the nature of the work? No, we haven't discussed it with him at all. But I can set your mind at rest about her. You are sure of her political side? Oh, oh, yes. Well, there is nothing to be lost if we proceed as you advise. Now, that's fine. I'll give Devlin his instructions right away. It's nice out here. Let's not go out for dinner. Let's stay here. We have to eat. We can eat here. I'll cook. I thought you didn't like to cook. No, I don't like to cook. But I have a chicken in the icebox, and you're eating it. What about all the washing up out there? We'll eat it with our fingers. Do we leave any plates? One for you and one for me. Do you mind if I had dinner with you tonight? I'd be delighted. Where are you going? Well, if you're going to stay in, I have to telephone the hotel, see if there are any messages. You have to. I have to. This is a very strange love affair. Why? Maybe the fact that you don't love me. Hello? Palace Hotel? Alling Days? It's T.R. Devlin. Are there any messages for me? When I don't love you, I'll let you know. You haven't said 
said anything. Actions speak louder than words. <laughs> there is. Go ahead, read it to me, please. Prescott wants me over right away. Did he say what about? No. Maybe it's our assignment. Probably. Do you want me to bring anything back with me? Yes. What about a nice bottle of wine? A celebration. Natasha, come back. What is it, Devlin? What's the matter? I don't know if she'll do it. What do you mean you don't think she'd... You haven't discussed it with her, have you? No, I didn't know what the job was until this moment. Well, then what do you mean she wouldn't do it? Well, I don't think she's that type of woman. She strikes me as well, being I rather... I don't understand your attitude. Why do you think she won't do it? Well, she's had no experience. Oh, come now. <laughs> what experience does she lack, do you think? She's never been trained for that kind of work. They'll see through her. This woman was chosen not only because her father gives her an ideal background, but because Sebastian knows her. Oh, yes. He was once in love with her. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't see why we're arguing about petty things like this. We've got important work to do. Sebastian's house is a cover-up for whatever this Farben group's up to here in Rio. We've got to get Miss Huberman inside that house and find out what's going on there. Yes, that's right. So I think you'd better go back to Miss Huberman and explain to her what she has to do. I, uh... What is it? Nothing, sir. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. How is the meeting to be arranged? Oh, well, we've discussed that. I think the riding club would be the best place. Sebastian usually rides there in the mornings. So the rest is up to you and Miss Huberman. Okay, Devlin, that's all. All right. You? Uh-huh. I'm glad you're late. This chicken took longer than I expected. What did they say? Hope it isn't done too, too much. <laughs> caught, they caught fire once. I think it's better if I cut it up out here. Unless you want to have a one to yourself. We're going to have knives and forks after all. I've decided we're going to eat in style. Marriage must be wonderful with this sort of thing going on every day. I wonder if it's too cold out here. Maybe we should eat inside. <laughs> Hasn't something like this happened before? What's the matter? Don't look so tense. Troubles? Well, handsome, I think you better tell Mama what's going on. Or all this secrecy is going to ruin my little dinner. Come on, Mr. D. What is darkening your brow? After dinner. No, now. Look, I'll make it easy for you. The time has come when you must tell me that you have a wife and two adorable children, and this madness between us can't go on any longer. I bet you've heard that line often enough. Right below the belt every time. Well, that isn't fair, Dad. Skip it. We have other things to talk about. We've got a job. Oh, so there is a job. You, uh, you remember a man named Sebastian? Alex Sebastian? Yes. One of my father's friends, yes. He had quite a crush on you. I wasn't very responsive. Well, he's here, the head of a large German business concern. His family always had money. He's part of the combine that built up the German war machine in hopes to keep on going. Something big? It has all the earmarks of being something big. We have to contact him.
Go on, let's have all of it. We're meeting him tomorrow. The rest is up to you. You've got to work on him and land him. Marta Hari. She makes love for the papers. There are no papers. You land him. Find out what's going on inside this house, what the group around him is up to, and report to us. I suppose you knew about this pretty little job of mine all the time. No. I only just found out about it. Did you say anything? I mean, that maybe I wasn't the girl for such shenanigans. I figured that was up to you, if you'd care to back out. I suppose you told them Alicia Huberman will have this Sebastian eating out of her hand in a couple of weeks. She's good at that, always was. I didn't say anything. Not a word for that, that little lovesick lady you left an hour ago. I told you, that's the assignment. Well, now, don't get sore, dear. I'm only fishing for a little bird call from my dream man. One little remark such as, how dare you gentlemen suggest that Alicia Huberman, the new Miss Huberman, be submitted to so ugly a fate. That's not funny. Do you want me to take the job? You're answering for yourself. I am asking you. It's up to you. Not a peep. Oh, darling, what you didn't tell them, tell me. That you believe I'm nice and that I love you and I'll never change back. I'm waiting for your answer. What a little pal you are. Never believing me, hmm? Not a word of faith, just down the drain with Alicia. That's where she belongs. Oh, Dev. Dev. When do I go to work for Uncle Sam? Tomorrow morning. Oh, we shouldn't have had this out here. It's all cold now. What are you looking for? I had a bottle of champagne. I must have left it somewhere. In case you're asked, I'm with Pan American Airways. As Devlin? Yes, public relations office. Anything else? No, except we met on the plane coming in from Miami. Less detail, the better. Are you sure that's him? Yes. We'll go by him easy, let him spot you. Come on. Well, nobody remembers. Was it Sebastian? Yes. We'll stick around and give him another chance.
My dear Alicia, will you forgive me for being late? Last minute conference at the office. I've got my message. Yes, it's all right, Alex. It was sweet of you to wait. I was afraid you might run on. Oh, I'm not that easily put off. I was too anxious to meet you again. You know, I'm tired. The worst thing about business is it makes you feel old and look old. You seem to have escaped all of that. Four years of dullness and disintegration. Awful. Alex, you look younger than you did in Washington. Well, it's a temporary improvement, entirely due to your presence, my dear. You always affected me like a tonic. But perhaps now with you here in Rio, unless you insist on running away from me again. Oh, uh, would you like another drink? Yes, thank you. Dois martinis. You know him? No, I don't think so, but he seems familiar. Captain Prescott, intelligence man. He's down here as part of the Washington espionage. The American embassy is loaded with them. Really? Hey, he's rather handsome, isn't he? I'm allergic to American agents. Their fine points don't particularly appeal to me. Have they bothered you since you came down? <sighs> no, no, not yet. They were troublesome in Miami. Yes, that's why I left right after the trial, to get away from their snooping. I wondered why you left your father. Well, he insisted. He was so unselfish. He kept worrying about me, begging me to leave. I had no idea he was going to die. Many things have died for all of us. We mustn't let our spirit die with them. Perhaps I can help you to forget. I'd like to. It's odd. But I feel at home with you. You know, my dear, I knew this was going to happen. I knew when we met the other day that if I saw you again, I'd feel what I used to for you. Same hunger. You're so lovely, my dear. Now I'm going to make a fool of myself again. There's someone else, of course. Who is it this time? Is that Mr. Devlin you were with? There is no one. You seemed attentive. Mr. Devlin has pestered me with his attentiveness ever since I arrived. I met him on the plane from Miami. You made a pretty couple. Oh, no, Alex. Mr. Devlin doesn't interest me. I was so lonely that day I could have gone riding with Peter Rabbit. You'll let me help your loneliness? You are very sweet to forget what a brat I was once. My dear, I shall test out your repentance at once. Will you have dinner with me again tomorrow night? Thank you very much. My house? Yes, how nice. My mother is giving a dinner party. She won't mind an extra guest? Her old friend is never an extra guest. Well, should we order now? Yes, yes, I'm starved. Yes. Now, let's see. What should we... What should we have for our first dinner together? Good evening. Very good. Yes, yes, isn't it? Oh, I'd like you to wear these. They're rented for the occasion. Oh. Right. Would you help me, please? I, I think what? I can help. Well, yes, certainly. Thank you. So, uh, the old boy knew me, eh? Yes, he thought you were very handsome. <laughs> you don't say. Sorry I'm not going with you. Well, Dad will pick those up later. Right. Now, try to memorize the names of all the people you see there tonight. The men, I mean. And get their nationalities. That's very important. You mean the Germans? That won't be difficult for me. And I suggest that you uh, don't ask any questions. Just use your eyes and ears. They're a pretty keen and desperate bunch. Don't underestimate them. Right. Well, thank you for your instructions. Good evening. Oh, by the way, unless you have something very urgent to report, I suggest that you two keep shy of each other for the next few days. That's in case Sebastian's people want to check on you after your visit. Yes, I understand. That's all. Good, Good luck. Good evening. Good night.
Good evening. I'm Miss Huberman. Will you tell Mr. Sebastian that I'm here? Miss Huberman? Yes. Please, forgive me for keeping you waiting. Not at all. You resemble your father very much. I'm Alex's mother. I knew when I saw you. Alex has always admired you. Now at last I know why. You're very kind. You did not testify at your father's trial. We thought that unusual. He didn't want me to. He refused to let his lawyers call me on the stand. I wonder why. Hello. Lucia. I'm so glad. You met my mother? Yes, we just met. You didn't meet Alicia when we were in Washington four years ago, did you, Mother? I don't know where you were at the time. Alex, I think we should join our other guests. May I take your ride? Miss Huberman, may I present? Eric Matisse. How do you do? How do you do? William Rossman. How do you do? Very honored. Emil Hupka. How do you do? Delighted. And Mr. Nair. And Dr. Anderson. Dr. Anderson. Gives me great pleasure. Dr. Anderson is our guest of honor tonight. You mustn't yes. bore Miss Huberman Alex with discourses on science, not before dinner anyway. Dinner is served, madame. Dr. Anderson, you will sit beside me over there. Eric, you will sit next to Miss Huberman. You have just come from Spain, senora? A few weeks ago. It seems ages. Travel does not mean anything anymore. It goes so sweet. One has the feeling of huh? not going in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I suppose we can expect the rocket ships to be carrying us along the ocean very soon. You can expect many strange things. You a good movie this afternoon, Eric? No, I was disappointed. Mm, it must have been a comedy. You know, Eric loves to go to the movies to cry. It's very sentimental. At each end before we get really swift and perfect travel. It takes nearly as long to go from the city to the airport as it does to cross to the Atlantic. I'm afraid, gentlemen, that something must be done about Emil. I don't know. It was an understandable slip. The man was tired. Now, nah. it's a very dangerous slip. It is not the first one. There have been several other lapses before. There will be more, if you permit him. That's bad. It's very bad. I think, gentlemen, you can leave it to me to find some way. When you drive up to Petropolis, the road winds quite a bit. It is very high. There are some very awkward turns. I'm sure I will not have any difficulty in getting Emil to give me a lift in his car. It's quite a trick to jump clear. I'll just have to be careful, that is all. Turn my ankle the last time. Madame says, will you join the others or will you? Take your coffee in here. Oh, I think we'll take coffee in here, I mean. I'm very sorry, gentlemen, to make such an exhibition. A nonsense. We all have nerves. You have been overworking. Don't you think so, Rosner? 
You need a rest. Your health is very important to us. Oh, that's very considerate. I am very tired. So now I think perhaps if, if you make my pardon to the ladies, Alex, for my leaving so early, then I... Oh, no. Maybe, uh, Emil, it would be better if I came with you. I think perhaps if you try to drive yourself all the way up to Petropolis, it might be too much for you. I shall drive you. No. Not that it would be too much for you all that way. That's too much to ask. Nonsense. I'd love to go. Come on, Emil. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Alex. I hope you feel better in the morning, Emil. Thank you. And I'm very sorry to make a scene before strangers. Very sorry. Thank you, Alex, for an excellent dinner. And please tell your mother for me that the dessert was superb. Miss Huberman has been gone a long time. Mother, is it necessary for you to always address Alicia as Miss Huberman? I do wish you'd be a little more cordial to her. Really? I thought I was behaving very well. Has she been complaining about me? I'm grateful. Might smile at her. Wouldn't it be a little too much if we both grinned at her like idiots? Oh, no, please, Mother, I want to enjoy myself. Is it so boring to sit with me alone? Not at all, not at all. Hello. Oh, hello. I thought I saw you. How are you? Fine, thanks. Great turnout, isn't it? Yes. Where are they? In a box in the stand. I don't think they can see us, Alex and his mother. Don't telephone me anymore. Just rely upon my popping up. Can you hear me? Sure, go ahead. Heard of uh, Dr. Anderson? No. He's some kind of a scientist. Kind face, 60 years old, gray hair. Deep crease in the forehead. Tall or short? Short. Uh -huh. Emil Hupke, heard of him? No. He made um, quite a scene about a wine bottle the other night. The Mac Vintage? He seemed to think there was something else in the bottle. Was there? No. It was wine. We drank it. Has he pulled anything since? I haven't seen him since. Anything else? Nothing important. Just a minor item, but you may want it for the record. What is it? You can add Sebastian's name to my list of playmates. Pretty fast work. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Skip it. Are you betting on this race? No. Alex is number 10 is sure to win. He knows the owner. Thanks for the tip. Alex says they've been holding him back all season. I can't but help recalling some of your remarks about being a new woman. Days isn't buttercups, wasn't it? Oh, you idiot. What are you sore about? You knew very well what I was doing. Did I? You could have stopped me with one word, but no, you wouldn't. You threw me at him. I threw you at nobody. Didn't you tell me to go ahead? A man doesn't tell a woman what to do. She tells herself. You almost had me believing in that little hokey-pokey miracle of yours, that a woman like you could ever change her spots. Oh, you rotten. That's why I didn't try to stop you. The answer had to come from you. I see. Some kind of love test. That's right. Oh, well, you never believed in me anyway, so what's the difference? Lucky for both of us, I didn't. It wouldn't have been pretty if I believed in you. If I'd figured she'd never be able to go through with it, she'd been made over by love. If you only once had said that you love me. What oh, Listen, you chalked up another boyfriend, that's all. No harm done. I hate you. There's no occasion to. You're doing good work. Number 10's out in front. Looks as if Sebastian knows how to pick them. Is that all you have to say to me? Dry your eyes, baby. It's out of character. Except keep on your toes. It's a tough job we're on. Snap out of it. Here comes Dreamboat. Oh, hello, Alex. It was so exciting, a beautiful horse. Do you remember Mr. Devlin? How do you do? Hello. Alicia tells me you had a bet on number 10. Sorry I didn't get the tip earlier. So long. I'll see you sometime, Dave. It was a wonderful race. Did you have much money on the winner? I didn't see the race. Oh, didn't you? I thought I saw you looking through your field glasses. I was watching you and your friend, Mr. Devlin. I presume that's why you left my mother and me. You had an appointment to meet him. Don't be absurd. I met him purely by accident. 
You didn't seem very anxious to get away from him. Oh, he's just... I watched you. I thought maybe you're in love with him. Don't talk like that. I detest him. Really? He's very good looking. Alex, I've told you before, Mr. Devlin doesn't mean a thing to me. I'd like to be convinced. Would you maybe care to convince me, Alicia, that Mr. Devlin means nothing to you? Pleased to hear, Senor Barbosa, that our little theatrical plan is working. We've got hold of something concrete for a change. I'm delighted, gentlemen. What is it? Professor Wilhelm Otto Rensler is working here in Brazil. One of Germany's scientific wizards. I didn't know he was here. Oh, yes. He's living and experimenting in Sebastian's house. They call him Dr. Anderson. Entry. Excuse me, sir. Miss Ruben wishes to see Captain Prescott or Mr. Devlin. What do you mean? She's here? Yes, sir. I'll show her in, Hibero. Yes. I don't like this. I don't like her coming here. She's had me worried for some time. A woman of that sort. What sort is that, Mr. Beardsley? Oh, I don't think any of us have any illusions about her character, have we, Devlin? Not at all, not the slightest. Miss Huberman is first, last, and always not a lady. She may be risking her life, but when it comes to being a lady, she doesn't hold a candle to your wife, sir. Sitting in Washington playing bridge with three other ladies of great honor and virtue. Take it easy, Dave. Sorry. I think those remarks about my wife are uncalled for. Withdrawn? Apologize, sir. How do you do, Miss Huberman? How do you do? It's Mr. Beardsley and Senor Julio Barbosa. Let's sit down. Thank you. You have the steam on my government, Senorita. But we are worried about your visiting this office. I promise not to break the rules again, but I need some advice, and I couldn't find Mr. Devlin. In fact, I need it before lunch. Well, did something happen? Yes, something rather confusing. Mr. Sebastian has asked me to marry him. What? Well, well. He... Um, he wants me to marry him right away, and I have to give him my answer at lunch. And I didn't know what the department might think about such a step. Are you willing to go this far for us, Miss Huberman? Yes, if you wish. What do you think of this, Devlin? Oh, I think it's a useful idea. Well, you know the situation better than any of us. May I ask what inspired Alex Sebastian to go this far? He's in love with me. And he thinks you're in love with him? Yes, that's what he thinks. Gentlemen, it's the cream of the chest. Then... and it's all right? Well, yes, I'd... I'd say so. Of course, it's a perfect marriage for us. There's only one thing. Want to delay us a bit? What do you mean? Well, Mr. Sebastian is a very romantic fellow, isn't he, Alicia? Yes. Then he'll probably want to take his bride away for a long honeymoon. Won't that hold us up? Devlin's got a point there. Oh, I don't know. I think we can rely on Miss Huberman to get back into the house quickly. Yes, I think I can manage that. Well, everything seems to be nicely arranged. I don't think you need me here anymore, do you, Captain Prescott? I do want to thank you, Miss Huberman, very much. I think so far everything has been managed with great intelligence. Yes, thank you very much. Are you quite sure she didn't come down here to see you? To capture the rich Alex Sebastian for her husband? Oh, don't be absurd, Mother. She didn't even know I was here. We will discuss. Joseph. Joseph. Joseph doesn't look very cheerful here. Yeah? I'm sorry, sir. Madame Sebastian wasn't certain you'd be back tonight. Why not? I telegraphed her. Madame Sebastian said we were all to retire, sir. Where is my mother? Madame Sebastian went to bed very early, sir. I'm sorry, my dear. I'm afraid this isn't a very bright homecoming for you. That's all right, Alex. Well, what should we do? Shall we have Joseph arrange a little food for us? Mother, unless you want to, I'm rather tired myself. You go right up then? 
Good night. Good night. I'd like to have all my dresses put out on the beds here. Don't hang anything up. I'd like to know where everything goes. Oh, Joseph, did you have the closets aired? Yes, madame. Oh, this isn't very large. I'll need more room. This door is locked. That's used for a storeroom, madame. Oh. May I have the key? I do not have the keys, madame. Where are they? Madame Sebastian has charge of all the house keys, madame. Oh. Do you know where Mr. Sebastian is? I believe he is having a business meeting downstairs in the study, madame. I miss Hupka. He was a first class metallurgist. Glycine is just as good. Such is your opinion. But I don't want to criticize. What uh, were you asking? Oh, you want a report. A written report. Where are my friends? My work is done. You've been successful. Yes. Oh, I'm very sorry. Not I... at all. Come along in. No, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I didn't know you were busy. Some of the closets are, are locked. Could you give me the keys? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'd forgotten about the keys. Of course I'll get them. What do you want? Bring the keys to you right away, my dear. Mother. Mother. I'm going to be busy for the rest of the morning, my dear. See you at lunch. Thank you, dear. Mr. Sebastian has the key for this, madame. It's the wine, sir. Center is the obvious place to look. Alex has the key to that. Then get it from him. Get it? Yes, how? Don't you live near him? What do I look for if I get the key? You look for a bottle of wine, like the one they rattled the fellow at dinner that night. All the bottles look alike to me. I'm no mastermind. You're doing all right. It's no fun, then. Too late for that now, isn't it? Look, uh, why don't you persuade your husband to throw a large shindig so that he can introduce his bride to real society, say, sometime next week? Why? Consider me invited. Then I'll try and find out about that wine cellar business. Well, I don't think my husband is interested in entertaining just yet. The honeymoon isn't over, huh? Don't underestimate your charms, Mrs. Sebastian. You can handle it. I don't think it's going to be so easy about you. He thinks you're in love with me. Well, then tell him you thought if you invited me to the house and I saw how happily married you were, then the uh, horrid passion I have for you might be torn out of me. That sounds very logical. Good. Next week, then, and get the key. I have to fly up to Bel Air. But I'll be back in time. All right. I'll be looking forward to seeing you. It's always a pleasure meeting you, madame.
surprised Mr. Devlin coming tonight. Uh, I don't blame anyone for being in love with the darling. I, I just hope that uh, nothing will happen to give him any false impression. I'll be within a minute. Darling. It's not that I don't trust you. But when you're in love at my age, every man who looks at your woman is a menace. Will you forgive me for even talking about it? I'm very contrite. Well, I think we might join the rest of the party now. I think all our guests are here. the jolly little cottage. Let me show you around the place. Later, his nips is on the trail. <laughs> Evelyn? Good evening. Glad to see you. It's kind of your bride to invite me. We both invite you, Mr. Devlin. You see that our guest is fed, my dear, and amused. You know what? Oh, excuse me. Madam Esterick, I'm so glad to see you. This isn't going to be easy. Why? He, uh... He's quite sensitive about you. He's going to watch us like a hog. Yes, he's rather jealous of anyone. Where did you get the key off his chain? Yes. Let's hope the liquor doesn't run out and start him down the cellar for more. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Quite a point. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Devlin, how nice you remember me. Senor Ortiz. How sweet. Young men usually have short memories. Oh, here's something I adore, champagne. Oh, uh, may I? Joseph? Madame? Do you think you have enough champagne to last for the rest of the evening? I don't know, madame. I hope so. Enjoying yourself, Mr. Devlin? Very much, thank you. There are so many things I would like to ask you about the States. I haven't heard anything for a long time. I'll be glad to tell you. Will you excuse me, Senora? Oh, you mind? No, Joseph might have to ask Alex for more wine. Uh-huh. He's running out faster than he thought. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Is he uh, watching? Yes. You better go out in the garden alone and wait around back at the house for me, and I'll show you the wine cellar door. Mm -hmm. 
Nice party, isn't it? It's a wonderful party. I think you've done it wonderfully well. I'm very proud. Mr. Devlin bother you much? Oh, no, darling. He's trying to drown his sorrow. Ah, moi, je n'oublierai jamais, bon, que jamais, jamais ma première chasse. Figurez-vous, mon père et des amis m'avaient invité à une chasse au sanglier. Et c'était la première fois, je ne savais plus me contenir. Les chasseurs l'entouraient. Quant à moi, pris de je ne sais quoi, d'une joie indescriptible, je me mis à courir contre les ordres donnés. Excuse me. I think I'll ask the orchestra to play some Brazilian music. They've played waltzes all evening. Oh, my God. Je disais donc, je crois depuis cinq minutes. Vintage sand. Hmm. We've got to leave things as we found them. Help me find a bottle of wine with the same label as these others. But it isn't really sand, is it? No, I think it's some kind of metal ore. Stay upstairs, Joseph. They may need you. Yes, sir. Alex. You love him. No, of course not. Please go. For what it's worth, as an apology, your wife is telling the truth. I knew her before you, loved her before you, but I wasn't as lucky as you. Sorry, Alicia. Please go. Good night.
Alex, don't be foolish. I, I came down here because he threatened to make a scene unless I'd see him long. He kissed you. I... I couldn't stop him. I tried. We'll talk about it later. Your guests are upstairs. Will you please go to them? Mr. Devlin, are you going so soon? Yes, I'm afraid I have to be up early in the morning. Thank you and good night. Oh, Joseph. Yes, sir. We'll go down for the wine now. Yes, Joseph, I don't think we need to give them any more champagne. We still have some upstairs, haven't we? Yes, sir. And some whiskey and wine? Yes, sir. Well, I think we'll give them that. Very good. I'm sorry about what happened, Alex. Oh, my dear. I should never forgive myself for behaving like a stupid schoolboy. Then you believe me? Well, of course. It isn't worth mentioning again. Thank you. Are you coming up? Not for a little while. Dr. Anderson's waiting for me in the study. Sleep well. It was a very successful party. Good night, then. Good night. Thanks for being so nice. Thank you. 
Why are you up so early? I need your help. Something is wrong? Great deal. Alicia. I have expected it. I knew. I knew. What is it? Mr. Devlin? No. I am married to an American agent. Yes. It is easy to see now. I knew, but I didn't see. They picked her because of her father. I must have been insane, mad. Behaved like an idiot to believe in her with her clinging kisses. Stop wallowing in your foul memories. Well, what do I do? There's nothing to do. I'm done. Finished. I'll find out. They won't find out. I'll find out what I'm married to. Look what they did to Emil Hupka. Emil, who did nothing. And I betrayed them, I bungled, and there's no excuse. I'd do the same myself. Kill the fool who betrayed them. There's no need for them to find out. Mattis is very sharp. Yes, he dislikes you. But his criticism of your talents wouldn't go that far to imagine that you are married to an American agent. You are protected by the enormity of your stupidity. For a time. Alicia, I'll take care of her myself. No, not that way. I stood looking at her when she was asleep. I could have... Quiet, Alex. You're almost as impetuous as before your wedding. You barred me from that episode. Let me arrange this one. Listen to me. No one must know what she is. There must be no suspicion of her, of you, or me. She must be allowed to move about freely. But she will be on a leash. She will learn nothing further to inform. She must go. But it must happen slowly. If she could become ill. And remain ill for a time. Until... Drink your coffee, darling. It's getting cold. Are you going out this afternoon, Alex? No, my dear. I have some letters to write. What are you going to do? Oh, I just have a little shopping. I like to go to the Imperial, and maybe I'll go to Cosmos and see if they have any new books in from New York. Oh, if you're going down there, will you go into Sousa Cruz for me and see if my cigars have arrived? There should be about a thousand of them. If they have, ask them to keep them in the humidor for me, will you? Anything wrong? No. No, no, the light bothers me. May I have a bit of a headache? Would you mind? Oh, yes, I think we can fix that. Thank you. You know, some people get too much sun down here. You must be careful. I think you can be very proud of yourself, Mrs. Uh, Sebastian. That sand that Devlin brought in shows uranium ore. So now we know what we're driving at. And your job from now on will be to try to help us find out where that sand comes from. The location of the uranium deposit is of vast importance, and we're putting quite a few people on it. But I think uh, you'll be a great help. All right. But that isn't the main reason why I asked you to come up here this afternoon. No. No, I wanted to uh, tell you that I'm going to change your contact in about a week. Mr. Devlin's been transferred to Spain. To Spain? Does Mr. Devlin know that? Oh, yes. He uh, asked for the transfer. Why? Well, I guess he thought he was going stale here. Oh, he wants to leave Rio. Yes, I guess he thought he'd find Spain more interesting. Yes, I imagine it would be. There really isn't very much for a brainy fellow like Mr. Devlin to do in Rio anymore. Well, of course, it is more or less routine now. In the meantime, I'm to report to Mr. Devlin as usual. Oh, yes. He'll be here until the new man arrives. Thank you, Captain Prescott. I'll keep my ears wide open. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, and uh, go 
easy on that son, hey? Darling, what is it? Oh, I don't know. Are you in pain? Yes, I, I'm so dizzy. I... What, what happened to her? We oh, were walking and she was stricken suddenly. I'll be all right. Let's go inside. I'm sorry I couldn't make it on time. I guess a bit lonely squatting on a bench all day. Yes, Rio can be a very dull town. What's new? Nothing. What's new with you? Nothing. Any domestic troubles about the other night? No. Any footprints in that sand yet? No, nothing yet. Just a social visit, huh? A little fresh air helps. You don't look so hot. News back to the bottle again, huh? It sort of lightens my chores. Big party? Just the family circle. Sounds quite jolly. It helps life in a dull town. You ought to take it easy on that liquor. Don't you find Rio a little hard to take to? Not a bad town. You look all mashed up. Must have been quite an evening. Yeah, it was. Okay, if you want to play that way, go on, have fun. No reason why you shouldn't. That's right. Uh, here's something that belongs to you. I should have given it to you sooner. What is it? A scarf that you lent me once in Miami. Cleaning house, huh? Fresh air isn't as good for hangovers, I thought. Sit down, you're still tight. I don't want to. Where are you going? Back home. You are not taking care of yourself, Alicia. I feel much better. You look like something awful. Circles under the eyes. My dear child, you must have a doctor find out what is the matter with you. I never go near doctors. They always want to cart you off to a hospital. Maybe you belong in a hospital. Tell me, when did you first feel sick? Oh, I, I don't remember. Maybe the party, I think. I still think a sea trip would be much better for you, darling, than doctors and hospitals. A little cruise somewhere. Maybe Spain. Put the roses back in your cheeks, my sweet. I don't think so. I don't care much for boats. We could go together, my dear, if you could bear to leave Alex behind for a few weeks. I think I prefer Alex to a case of seasickness. I always get seasick. Then you might like the mountains. The air is fresh and pure, and I'm going next week. Oh, you're leaving? I'm sorry. I'll miss you. Yes, I'm delaying my work too long. If you'll come with me, the mountains won't make you seasick. And the Aymores Mountains are beautiful, covered with flowers and... No, oh, um, what Alicia needs is rest, not mountain climbing. I've heard about the Aymores. Did you? Really? Mm. Yes. One of the beautiful little native towns. Tell me, are you going to Leopoldina? No, no, no. I'm going to send them a... Care for some more brandy, Arthur? No, no, thank you. I, uh, 
Never drink more than one brandy, and even this is sometimes too much. I just finished my coffee. No, that is. Oh, but that's a lit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, perhaps uh, uh, Alex is right, my dear child. When you are young, rest is the best doctor. And if you lie still for a few days, reading, relaxing, forgetting all your troubles, it might be as well as uh, medicine was here. And when I come back, you will be all well, making us all very happy once more. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I won't go to bed, if you know. Play me again, darling. I'm sorry to come play me again. Shall I take you up to the morning? May I help you, my dear? Some hot water, maybe? No, no, please don't bother. I'll be all right. If you better in the morning, I insist you call it doctor. I don't like the way she looks at us. Joseph, disconnect the telephone. Madam must have absolute quiet. Take it out of the room, Joseph. Quite a binge she's on. I don't think so. Well, you said she was drinking last week, drunk when you saw her. Yes, but I've had time to think it over. Think what over? That drinking of hers. I don't believe it. Why should she lie to you about that? Don't know. She wasn't drunk, she was sick. Maybe that's why she hasn't shown up. She looked like the ragged end of nowhere. Well, it still sounds like a hangover to me. Yes, but I'm gonna pay a call. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want you to mess things up. We hope to close this case out in a few days. I won't mess anything up. Just a social call. I, uh, I'm a friend of the family. All right, go ahead if you want to. But don't take any chances. Oh, and uh, call me up when you get back. I'll do that. Okay. Good evening. Family home tonight? Yes, sir. Would you mind telling Mr. Sebastian that Mr. Devlin is here? What is it, Joseph? I'm very sorry, sir, but since Mr. Sebastian asked me not to disturb him, I don't know. Asleep? No, sir. He's in the study with some business associates, sir. How long do you think he'll be tied up? I don't know, sir. Mrs. Sebastian home? Uh, yes, sir. Would you mind telling her? I'm afraid I can't, sir. Why not? 
Mrs. Sebastian is very ill and confined to her bed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. How long has she been ill? A week. Has she had a doctor? I think so, sir. We're all very concerned about her. If you will wait here, Mr. Devlin, I'll tell Mr. Sebastian. Right. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Judge? Mr. Devlin, to see you, sir. Oh. Tell him I'll be with him in a minute, will you? Yes, sir. Go on, Professor. This sounds serious to me. To me also. What happened Monday? Same thing. When I left the bank, a man was following me. But this morning, when I went to the ticket office, the same man came inside and stood beside me. What's wrong with you? I'm so glad you came. I had to. I couldn't stand anymore, waiting and worrying about you. There wasn't a hangover you had that day. You were sick then. What is it? Yes, I was sick. What's wrong with you, Alicia? Oh, dear. What is it, dear? What's wrong with you? They're poisoning me. I couldn't get away from them. I tried, but I was too weak. How long? Since the party. Alex and his mother found out. Come on, try and sit up. Sit up. I've got to get you out of here. I thought you had gone. No. I had to see you once speak my piece. I was getting out because I love you. I couldn't bear seeing you and him together. Oh, you love me. Why didn't you tell me before? I know. But I couldn't see straight or think straight. I was a fat-headed guy full of pain. It tore me up not having you. Oh, you love me. Oh, you love me. Long ago, all the time since the beginning. Well. Put on your robe. Come on. Yes. Try to sit up. Yes. Oh, Dad. I'm afraid I, I can't make it because they gave me pills to sleep. Keep awake. Keep talking. Yes. Have you got a coat? In the closet. He didn't want the others to know about me. Haven't. Well, they'd kill him if they knew. Oh, they killed Emil. Are you in pain? I don't know. The pills. Give me your feet. Yes. 
say it again, he keeps me awake. I love you. Stand up. Stand up. Oh. Come on, wake up. Talk. Dr. Anderson. Go on, go on, walk, talk. The sand comes from the Imores Mountains. We'll find it. From a town, Santa Mar, something. Good girl. We'll take care of them later. Come on, keep away, keep walking. Oh, I'm talking. afraid, Dev. I'm afraid they're all in the house. We can't make it. Don't ever leave me. You'll never get rid of me again. Never try to. Brace up. Here he comes. What are you doing, Alicia? What is this, Mr. Devlin? I'm taking her to the hospital to get the poison out of her. Poison? How'd you like your friends downstairs to know? They've yet to be told. I'm taking her back to her room. Oh, dear. I'll raise quite a rumpus if you try. Alex. He knows? Yes. What is happening, Alex? Alicia. She's worse? Yes. Go. Oh, dear, we're going. We're going. You haven't forgotten what they did to Emil, have you, Sebastian? Help him, Alex. I'm glad you have a head on you, madame. I'm not afraid to die. You've got your chance here and now. Tell them who she is. You need any help, Alex? No, we can handle her. Where are you taking her? You answer that one, Sebastian. To the hospital. Alex, talk to them quick. Glad she's going. You should not have waited so long, Alex. Well, what am I going to do? Start shooting? Hold on, darling. You've only got about 20 hours to go. What happened, Alex? Hmm? Oh. Um. She collapsed. Mr. Devlin heard her scream when he was waiting for me. Come on, Alicia. Yes, I telephoned the hospital as soon as I saw how she was. You have a car, Mr. Devlin? Out in front. Your head, Alex. You're going with them, Anna? No. Alex will call me up. I'll wait here. Good. How do you feel? A bit dizzy. Take some deep breaths. Hurry, hurry. Well, now, just a minute. I must sit with her. No room, Sebastian. Oh, but you must take me there. Watch you, Ray. That's your headache. No, please take me. Please, please, please. There is no telephone in her room to call the hospital. Alex. Will you come in, please? I wish to talk to you. <laughs> 